talked about several years, how I saved some money every month when I was back home in Abuja then. I was saving every month. And I had plans for that savings. And when I attended Shiloh, and they were talking about Shiloh's sacrifice, and I was saying, Father, what should I give? What should I give? Uh, let me find trouble. Let me ask. What should I give? And the Lord said, that one that you have been keeping for me for the past one year, for that project that you have in mind, I want everything. Empty the accounts for me. Do you understand that? And that was a specific one. Why? Because I asked God what I want, what He wants. I could have just taken it and given it. And say, yeah, I'm giving it to God. But I wanted a sacrifice that will speak. Because sacrifice is speak. Do you understand, sir? So I asked God, God, what do you want me to give? And he by himself said what he wants me to give. And I gave it. I've said this testimony several years. For those that have not heard it, let me repeat it again. What I was saving that money for, that money would have not been able to do it for me. What God did for me by that giving, let me begin to mention it. Number one, I was expecting my husband to come. I was nearly a year after my marriage and I was still in Nigeria. And my husband has not been able to bring me here. And I was expecting him to come to visit at least that year. And after one year, you know, I, I think so you marry her and your wife is in Africa. And I'm saying, I want him to come. And daddy said, if you not give me permission for work, I will not come. And later, they only gave him two weeks. They only two weeks. It's not, it's not what the money I'm going to spend. I will not come. I said that he will come. I said that I'm not coming. I said, okay. So I went to God in prayers. As God said, give that, empty that account. I said, okay, Lord, I want my husband to come this December. I want us to spend Christmas together. I want you to grant him journey messages to and fro. And then, suddenly, daddy came. This was a, an offering I gave early December. And daddy came. And I said, when he comes, even if it's just two weeks he's going to spend, I want to take him. And as he came, I took him. And that was how I had children. And I also said, I don't want to have my child in Africa. As I take him, before the ninth month that I will deliver, I want to be with my husband here in Europe. <coughs> and that same sacrifice spoke and brought me here the eighth month, very close to my delivery. That as I got here, uh, 14 or 11 days after I got here, I gave birth to treasure. What many people thought was impossible with my big tummy, for those that have seen my pregnancy and how big they are. They even thought I would not be able to enter flights. The God gave a commandment to the ambassador of Spain for Nigeria, for, uh, for us. And he said, when your wife comes to the embassy, call daddy. He said, daddy has told him to testify if God is not bad. When your wife comes to the embassy, tell her to see me. When I got to the Spanish embassy, if you know the stress that people go through in that Spanish embassy, let me know begin to talk about that. When I said I wanted to see the man, they were asking at the counter, do you know him? I said, no. He said I should see him. They did not believe him, because that kind of man cannot ask to see you now. He called. He said, yes, 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 yes. He should tell her that I'm coming down to see her. An ambassador came down to see me. He did not even say, let her come. He came down by himself to see my big little face. And he told me, Madam, ah, you are pregnant. My pregnancy was just three months then. I'm pregnant, don't worry. You have this child in Spain. I said, Amen. By the eighth month, when I was finally able to run in all the documents that was required, all the stress of go back tomorrow, go and bring another document, and I was traveling from Abuja to Lagos, all this with pregnancy. And I was going by bus. When I find when he finally gave me the visa at the eighth month, he said, Oh madam, I'm so sorry. Yeah, because he went on vacation and came back and met that I said, you are still here, you are going to get it. He said, your belly is so big, oh, they may not allow you to fly, but don't worry. When you give birth, come back, I will give you visa and your daughter. I will give you and your child visa to go. And I rejected it. I said, I must have my child. He spent with my husband. And I took that visa and caught that. We bought tickets. I had the provisions came. It was just God that was making people to, to respond. We bought ticket 1,000 something because it was just three days in Tava. That was how I landed here. I came here about 11 days after I gave birth. 
See one hundred and something thousand that I have in my accounts because I was saving one thousand. I mean, ten thousand every month for my salary. Then it seemed big, but now it's nothing. The one hundred and twenty thousand, one hundred and ten thousand that I have in my accounts at the end of that year would have not been able to do all this that I'm saying now for me because I know how much we spent all through this period. Number one, you would have not even bought the ticket that brought that that December. It would have not protected him to come and go back again safely. It would have not protect, provided the job that he needed to have to be able to invite the wife. It would have not given him the flat that he needed to be able to do family reunion. It would have not even given him the connection with the ambassador to say, you must, I must give you your visa. It would have not even bought the tickets that brought me here. So every time God says release, we are holding back. We are stopping ourselves. We are hindering the big thing that God wants to do for us. That seed that you are holding is nothing compared to the harvest that will come if you just sow it.